In this video, I will introduce four examples of physical systems that lead to a system of differential equations. The first example is a particle that's moving in the plane. And for this particle, we're going to specify a velocity vector. So we're going to specify the rate of change of the x-coordinate, dx dt, and the rate of change of the y-coordinate, dy dt. In particular, we want to say that dx dt depends on x and y using the equation 2 times the x-coordinate minus 5 times the y-coordinate. And then dy dt is equal to the x-coordinate minus 2 times the y-coordinate. So the velocity vector is specified by a vector field. That vector field, like the ones that you saw in Calculus 3, is 2x minus 5y and x minus 2y. In fact, if I uh, want to look at one particular vector, we could say that the velocity at the point 1, 1 is equal to the vector 2 times 1 minus 5 times 1, so negative 3, and x being 1 minus 2 times 1, negative 1. So I can see that the vector is in the negative 3, negative 1 direction, which is this direction right here. I'd like to get a more dynamic picture of this vector field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up in the phase planes activity in slopes. Now what you're seeing here is a phase plane. A phase plane is just a plot of the vector field associated with the differential equation. So here I've plotted the vector field 2x minus 5y and x minus 2y. Each of the vectors uh, is given by these two equations. Now, each of the vectors that you see uh, has the same length because phase planes, generally, they plot the vectors with uh, the same length. But we could scale the vectors based on the magnitude of the vectors. And so if you look at the settings, we can go down to where it says scale arrows and turn that on. And now you'll see that uh, for x and y that are closer to the point 0, 0, then the vectors are smaller. And uh, for x and y that are closer or farther away from 0, 0, then the vectors are larger. Now, these vectors are not to scale, uh, but they do give you a sense of the relative size of of the vectors. Now, this velocity field could represent, say, the currents uh, in a two-dimensional uh, surface of, of water. So we could have currents in a lake or a river on, in a two-dimensional surface of water. They could also represent air currents, but again, they would have to be in a two-dimensional domain. But the idea is, is if you had a pebble and you wanted to drop it into the current, say we could drop the pebble at the point 1, 1, then the velocity would be pointing uh, in the negative direction for both x and y, and we would see that the pebble would move down and to the left <laughs> until the arrows start turning around, and then the pebble will turn around and start moving up and to the right. In this case, the pebble moves in an elliptical orbit. So you're seeing not uh, in the big graph on the right side, uh, you're, you're seeing what, how the pebble is moving in the space in the xy plane, but you're not seeing how it's moving over time. In the graph in the lower left-hand corner, you can see uh, how the x and y coordinates are changing over time. In fact, if I press this trace button, you can see how the x and y coordinates are changing over time and how that's affecting the position of this particle uh, in the phase plane. 
Now, uh, you should notice that corresponding to this elliptical orbit in the, in the phase plane, you see that the graphs of x and y are both periodic. Okay, and that has to do with the fact that, that we have that closed elliptical orbit in the phase plane. That closed elliptical orbit is telling us that eventually the x and y values repeat. And so that's why, again, you see that we have um, these periodic functions for x and y. Uh, later on, we're going to learn how to solve these equations, but for now, we can at least examine what the solutions look like. Uh, if you get farther away from the origin, we do notice that the, uh, that the orbit gets larger. If you get closer to the origin, we notice that that orbit gets smaller. In fact, we might want to ask ourselves, is there any fixed position for this phase plane? Okay, so uh, if you look at the system, as I've written it here, I could also write it as a matrix. That matrix is 2, negative 5, 1, negative 2, multiplied by the vector x, y, and so we think about the system as being the derivative of the x, y vector, that's what this is, is equal to a matrix times the x, y vector. That's a nice way uh, to classify the system. But we can ask, is, are, is there any point where the derivatives are zero? Okay, can we set these derivatives equal to zero? And if we do so, that will tell us that x and y both have to be zero. Uh, you can go ahead and solve that using any particular method from linear algebra. Uh, I would note here that that matrix uh, is invertible, and so there's only one solution, and zero, zero is that solution. Okay, and x equals zero, y equals zero, so that's a fixed point there. Okay, we call that the equilibrium solution. Okay, so I'm going to kind of put this in parentheses here, okay, to say that if it equals 0, 0, then x and y must be equal to 0. That is and called the equilibrium solution, or uh, because it's a point in the phase plane, it's called an equilibrium point. So that's the first example. Let's move on to a second example. This example uh, involves mixing problems. So in this example, we're going to let S1 and S2 be the amounts of salt in tanks 1 and 2, which hold 100 gallons. So I'm going to have two tanks. I'm going to put one tank here that holds 100 gallons. And then a second tank, maybe I'll put it here. That one also holds 100 gallons. And a salt solution of 0.25 pounds per gallon flows into tank one at four gallons per minute. Okay, so what we have is a salt solution that's flowing into this tank. And it tells us what the rate is. And then a well-mixed salt solution drains from tank one into tank two. So there's some drain here, and a well-mixed solution is going to uh, flow from tank one into tank two uh, at, again, a rate of four gallons per minute. And then, finally, a well-mixed salt solution drains from tank two at a rate of four gallons per minute. So now we're going to have a well-mixed solution that's going to drain out of that tank. The initial salt content of tanks one and two is 10 and 20 pounds respectively in this, in this example. Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, coming up with some equations uh, to describe this problem. I first want to note that uh, the salt solution flows into tank one at four gallons a minute per minute, and then from one to two at four gallons per minute, and then finally from tank two at a rate of four gallons per minute. 
So the volume here never changes. The volume remains at 100 gallons throughout. So uh, let's start with a salt solution is flowing in at a rate of 0.25 pounds per gallon. Okay, so the rate in is 0.25 pounds per gallon. And then that's gonna be multiplied by four gallons per minute, and that gives you the rate of salt in pounds per minute that's flowing in, and then flowing out at a rate, uh, flowing out is going to be a well-mixed solution, so that's S1 pounds divided by 100 gallons at a rate of 4 gallons per minute. Okay, so notice again that these rates are, are going to be in pounds per minute. Now, uh, for S2, we have that uh, there is a salt solution draining from tank one to tank two. So essentially we have the S1 pounds per 100 gallons at four gallons per minute is leaving tank one, but it's entering tank two, so it's positive there for tank two. And then a well-mixed solution, that well-mixed solution will be S2 pounds of salt divided by 100 gallons is gonna flow out at a rate of four gallons per minute. And so that gives us uh, our differential equation. I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. ds1 dt is going to be one minus one over 25 S1, and then ds2 dt is going to be one over 25 S1 minus one over 25 S2. And that is uh, a system that's going to describe the amount of salt in tanks one and two. We could also write this using matrix notation. We could write this as the derivative of S1 and S2 is equal to a matrix that multiplies the vector S1 and S2 and then plus something that's left over. Okay, so the matrix, we want to do 1 minus 1 over 25 times S1 and 0 S2, that's for the S1 equation. And then for the S2 equation, we want to do 1 over 25 times S1 and minus 1 over 25 times S2. The only thing that's missing is this one, so we leave it outside as a vector. That vector is one, zero. And that is now uh, a way to write this in matrix vector notation. And so then the question then becomes, okay, what is gonna go on with the salt contents of tanks one and two over time? So we can view this as a phase plane. Let's go ahead and look at this in slopes. We can change the system. I've saved the system here. This is the tank problem. And uh, you can see that all the arrows seem to kind of be flowing toward a point. So depending on where I start, uh, the initial salt content uh, given in this problem was uh, 10 pounds in tank one and 20 pounds in tank two. So that's this point right here. Okay, and that plots on the that plots on the phase plane. But notice that it doesn't quite stop. Uh, so sometimes you have to ask the, the, the plotter to plot for longer. The way I do that is I adjust the xy plane. So I increase time on the xy plane and you'll notice that the solution starts to in, uh, continue to move uh, as I increase time. Okay, and so it appears that uh, 
that the solution is approaching uh, 25 pounds of salt for each of the two tanks uh, based on what I see. Let's start with a different initial point. Maybe we'll start with zero in one tank in the first tank and 100 gallons in the second tank. Okay, again, I'm gonna adjust this so it continues to move over time. Okay, and again, look, it appears to be flowing toward uh, 25, 25. Let's try another one out here. That's 100 gallons in each tank. Okay, again, I'm adjusting the time here. And notice, again, it's moving towards 25, 25. How about zero in tank two, but 100 in tank one? Okay, and I'm going to uh, adjust the time and notice that it's flowing toward uh, again, 25, 25. So all solutions uh, seem to be going to 25 pounds of salt in tank one and 25 pounds of salt in tank two. That makes me think that maybe that's an equilibrium point. So uh, if I go back and I look at my equations, I can set these equations equal to zero, zero. So if it's equal, if I set them equal to zero, zero, and I solve, in fact, it turns out that S1 would equal 25 and S2 is equal to 25. So it appears that 25, 25 is an equilibrium point there, but also uh, it is an equilibrium that it's a that both solutions are approaching when I do uh, S1 and S2 uh, versus time. So now that you see that a solutions are approaching that equilibrium point, you might start to wonder about things about is that what we would call a stable equilibrium point? And that's something else that we will get into throughout uh, this chapter.